Good morning. Our mass intentions this morning are in memory of Irene Jenkins and in memory of the deceased members of the Weiskopf family. If you're interested in learning more about St. Bridget Parish, there are welcome packets at all of the doors. Our entrance hymn this morning is song 553, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Would you please stand as we begin this celebration in song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to receive the body and blood of our salvation, let us take a moment as we pause and call to mind the times when we have not served the Lord faithfully. So let us ask for God's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us from sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you make present the reign of God among us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your presence heals our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat>
let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. the Lord be with you, my friends. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus, kneeling down, begging him, and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in a deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Leprosy in the ancient times was a terrible affliction. Not only was the leper doomed to a painful and certain death, they were cast out of their families and society. People were afraid of them and didn't want them around. They were effectively banished out of sight and out of everyone's mind, off on their own to fend for themselves. Most of us have had the experience of being different, of being in the minority, 
But even when we are different, in most cases, we are made to feel welcome. We may feel awkward, but it's not like we are unwanted or even rejected by others. Our country was founded as a free democracy, but has a history of rejecting and discriminating against those who are different. It took a hundred years before the black person was gained freedom from slavery. About the same time that was happening, 20 Catholics were killed in Louisville in a riot led by anti-Catholic American nationalists. It was only a little over 100 years ago that women were seen as equal enough to be granted the right to vote in our country. All ancient history, we think. But what are our attitudes right now towards those who are different from us? Do we think our jobs would be safe if we banished all the illegal aliens? Would our taxes be lower if the welfare class would get off the couch and get jobs? Would our marriages be protected if all the gays and lesbians went back into the closet? Do we make these people feel welcome? Do we really want them around? What is it that makes us so afraid that we would discriminate and make other people who are different from us feel so unwanted? Francis of Assisi was the educated son of a wealthy merchant. He wore the knight's armor and fought in the Crusades. He wasn't afraid of anything except lepers. One day after the war, he was home, recovering from an illness. A leper came and stood on the path in front of his horse, looking for water and food. Instead of throwing a rock and galloping off as usual, Francis got down, approached the leper, and hugged him. That day, Francis of Assisi became a saint. He feared nothing. All the horror stories we hear about leprosy are true. And it was especially terrible in the Old Testament times. The leper was physically disfigured. They were gross to look at and you could smell them coming. You could also hear their bell ringing and they were required to shout, unclean, unclean, whenever they came close to people. They were outcasts and outsiders and the only people who cared for them until they died were the other lepers. Even worse, Everyone, including the leper himself, believed they were cursed by God. Leprosy was seen as God's punishment for sin, and that was another reason for them to be cast aside. Even religious beliefs justified the leper's rejection from family and society. Jesus broke every biblical law and every Hebrew tradition just by approaching the leper. It was outrageous and scandalous that Jesus would touch the unclean, sinful leper. It took a miracle for Jesus to show that God is willing to reach out and embrace all those whom religion and society look down upon discriminating against the cast out because of the, their physical or moral weakness. There is some debate among biblical scholars 
if Jesus was moved by pity. Some translations say Jesus was moved by anger. Maybe Jesus was angry at the terrible sickness. Maybe Jesus was angry at the way the leper was being treated by others. Regardless, Jesus was moved by pity or anger to act with compassion. Jesus' miraculous healing cured the man of leprosy and restored him to the community. We may not have been called to be miracle workers. It may be impossible for us to restore the unwanted back into their community. But all of us, all of the time, whether out of pity or anger, are called to act with compassion. Reaching out with compassion to those who are different from us can be a scary thing. We may scandalize others by embracing the outcast, but that's what Francis of Assisi did. That is what Jesus did. We may be treated like outcasts ourselves. None of us want to be different, to be cast out, to be unwanted. But Francis and Jesus both were rejected for acting with compassion. We are called to act with compassion like Jesus did. And if we are with Jesus, then we have nothing to fear. A friend of mine recently reminded me of this when I lost sight of what God expects of us. If we need reminders of what our Lord expects of all of us, read Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Those are my thoughts for this weekend. God bless you. Let us unite our voices as we profess that I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for our sand, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated during the day and became man. For our sake, he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Islamic Church. I confess one baptism of goodness and of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let us bring our petitions before the Lord. For our holy church and her mission to build the kingdom of God in our midst, may God continue to uphold us in this sacred work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For world leaders, may the Prince of Peace guide them in their work for justice, peace, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who are outcast in society or feel alienated from others, may the Lord's enduring love embrace them 
in their vulnerability. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this faith community, may this <clears throat> sacramental graces we have received come alive in our every word and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may our merciful God bring them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us your great strength and love so that we can go forth and be your faithful witnesses through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, you are the healing who came to make us whole again. Jesus, you are the healing. Come show us how to live. Jesus, you are the healing. Jesus, you are the healing. Jesus, you are the healing. Come show us Let us pray that this, our sacrifice, might be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, 
and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your beloved Son. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gathered as the body of Christ, let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
as we proclaim
For those who can't be with us today, let us do an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is Donut Sunday. Stop by for some fellowship, some coffee, donuts, milk and juice. Also, this week is Ash Wednesday. Um, we have Ash Wednesday here, Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. We'll also have a service at 12 noon. The noon service will be very brief. Uh, it's uh, So if you know folks who their jobs are going to prevent them from coming to Mass. Uh, I'll be having a very brief prayer in ashes at noon. And then 6.30 will be at St. John full Mass. And then also uh, pay attention to the bulletin because it has listed uh, when we're going to be having Stations of the Cross as well as there will be a weekly adoration as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This beautiful celebration of the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and love one another. Amen. the great